in my domain Got the whole crowd screaming out our name It's a blowout, it's a hurricane It's over before you know it Why you shaking? We're a dynasty in the making We're the royalty, now we're breaking Down the enemy, move over the soldiers Take a swing, I can take a hit We die, it's fine, we live for this It's all for this We're gonna stand on top with our hands in the sky Gonna raise our cup to the stadium lights For the glory For the glory We celebrate with the city tonight Hear the hometown cheer, it's the Two, count them, two more races remain here until we're going to be determining the eight drivers that will battle in this second season of the Tax Slayer Truck Series Chase for the Championship. Good evening, everybody, and welcome here as we prepare for our weekend from Hillside Raceway under the lights here for 40 laps. And let me tell you what, guys, we're getting down to the nitty gritty, and what better two places for us to be heading to for the final two regular season races of the Tax Slayer Truck Series than here at Hillside, and then in two weeks at uh or is it two weeks good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome here as we get set for race number 18 of the season here of the ncra tax slayer truck series second season of the series and including tonight's race only three races remain on the schedule in which we will be determining the eight drivers will battle for this season's chase for the championship we are here to begin the weekend at Hillside Raceway, and I love this racetrack, and I'll tell you why, because this is a one-mile track that really seems to feel like a super speedway. It's so hard to hold on to the race lead. We're gonna see them three wide, maybe even four wide here tonight, and here's the best part. They're gonna be able to keep it together. You go back to last season here in the Tax Slayer Truck Series, the inaugural winner of this race was Julius Anderson, a driver that was struggling in the point standings. Didn't make it even into the playoffs with that victory, but was a driver that was kind of under the radar. Nobody expected him. So this kind of a racetrack and this kind of a race, especially this close to the end of the regular season, could potentially play a huge wild card factor into who we might see as a potential candidate that we might not have thought about to battle for this season's chase for the championship. We're going to have to wait and find out. We've got some candidates starting up here on the front row. Melody Baker rolling off on the pole position. Alongside of her is going to be the 73 of Hillary Sanchez. So an all-female front row. Melody Baker comes into this race currently situated in the 11th position in the point standings. And uh, Hillary Sanchez currently sits 6th in the point standings. Both of them with a win here tonight would jump into one of those 8 playoff positions. We'll have to see if track position is going to be key for these particular drivers. Look behind them in row 2. Tristan Allen. Now he comes into this race 24th in the point standings. But he's still got an opportunity in the upcoming 3 races to maybe get a win. Get enough good finishes to get himself up into contention. And Jack Legacy. He's looking for his first win of the season. And he is 5th in points. Let's go down and get that command. Drivers, start your engines! Command is given. 40 laps of racing await us here tonight. If the trend holds true, we may run all 40 of those laps under green flag conditions. Time to give you your top 10. The point stands coming into tonight's race presented by Golden Corral. The points lead is still a pretty good battle between Nathan Stapleton and Tony Green. Not as close as it was heading into Daytona last time out, but it's eight points, so it still is a pretty good points battle between those two. Third in points could be Patrick Curtis. Henry Williams is fourth. We mentioned Jack Legacy is fifth. Hillary Sanchez is sixth. Three-time winner Oreo Pollard seventh. Sky Commons is eighth. Defending champion Nick Johnson in ninth. And Brandon Joy completes the top ten. It's a mile long, but it kind of feels like a short track as quickly as these drivers get around it. Ready to go race in the hillside. I sure am. Green flags in the air. Let's roll. Now 
Brittany Baker, Hillary Sanchez, so close to both of them picking up their first win of the season back at Monster Rally, but neither one were able to close the deal as there you see the three wide already beginning. That's for second place. Paul Minnick to the inside. He's got a teammate right behind him there in Alexander Rowe. And having the draft is going to be very important here at this race. Because like I said, it's a mile racetrack, but it takes on the aspects of a super speedway in many, many regards. And it looks like Minnick is going to get alongside Melody Baker going into turn three. So Baker led the first lap. And now Minnick is going to come out leading the second lap. Or is he? Here comes Henry Williams looking low, but not going to quite get him at the line. He'll get to the inside heading here into turn one. Henry Williams is the highest running driver in the point stands without a victory so far this season. Right now, the eight playoff spots are currently held by multi-time winners. Oreo Pollard, Nick Johnson, Heather Gallant. The other five spots held by race winners this season. Nathan Stapleton, Tony Green, Patrick Curtis, Sky Commons, and right now Jake Smith holds the final position. But it's actually a uh, interesting battle for that eighth spot. Our last time out winner, Easton Barber, who took the win at Daytona. He comes into this race currently situated behind Jake Smith, a total of 16 points. And then Ace Garcia did not have a good showing last week at Daytona. He and Marty Zakala, they're kind of praying for a miracle along with uh, Matt Haas and Tyler Deaver for some of those drivers that I just mentioned with a win to encounter some problems here tonight in the upcoming weeks. A second win for those drivers though, like Haas, Zakala, Garcia, Deaver, certainly wouldn't hurt. Would help them leapfrog everybody else. Look at this, three wide for the lead. Andrew Miller to the bottom. Ryan Acosta took a turn out in front. Now Miller's going to, and now here comes Joseph Romero in the 83. Not gonna lead this lap though, doesn't look like. As Nice block there by Miller, and now the battle's on for second. Angel Olvera to the inside of Romero, and as I said, you can see they're three wide all the way back through this field, but they're keeping it together. We have completed six laps. We're about to complete the seventh. It's one of those kind of tracks, much like a super speedway, that's all about positioning. You want yourself in the right place at the right time to be able to be in the hunt for that race win in the closing stages. Angel Alvera, who was a points leader during the regular season for a good portion of it, actually, now faded back into the 13th position in points. Not been a great few weeks for that 89 team. Now up here at the front, trying to get to the inside of Andrew Miller, and will do so. Will she lead this lap? And it looks like she did. Or he did. I don't know. If, I, to be honest, I'm not sure if Angel Alvera is a, a male or a female. P.J. Williams now going to go to the front in that number 10. Williams has been struggling all year to stay in the top 30 in the points. 38th in points coming to this race. A former winner this season, but right now with the limited number of races remaining, doesn't look like he's going to make it back into the top 30 in points to be able to challenge for a playoff position. Jake Moss looking for his first win of the season. Won the race last year. Looking for a second win of his career. Moss comes into this race currently uh, 16th in points, so a win could certainly put him in playoff contention. It's now Angel Alvera back to the inside, this time of Joseph Romero for the top spot. Here come a couple of those drivers that were kind of, I was saying, we're hoping for a miracle. You got the 30 there of Tyler Deaver and the 51 of Ace Garcia, a couple of former winners trying to get their second win of the season here tonight. Driver have not noticed up towards the front yet. That's the 19 of Jake Smith who comes in in that critical final playoff position as things run right now. As Tyler Deaver will get to the front. Now Ace Garcia gonna look low for a position. Oh boy, almost a little contact there between the 51 and the 30, but they keep it together. Who's gonna lead this lap? It'll be Deaver by about half a truck length as they'll go three wide for the lead. This time, Brandon Joy is gonna stick both those drivers up to the middle and high side. And now Isaac Nichols says, how about we try this four wide? It settles back to double wide going into turn three. Nichols, a former playoff contender last season. He's now to the top spot. He'll lead that lap. Here comes Ricky Cervantes and that Nissan Titan and right behind him. Last year was a two-time winner, Nicholas Rail, now in the 54 for Kyle Busch Motorsports. He's 21st in the stands coming into this race, trying to get his first win of the season. Both of his Kyle Busch Motorsports teammates have won this year. Tony Green back at Darlington, Ace Garcia at Daytona. So Nicholas Rail's the lone man out. 
And here comes the defending champion, Nick Johnson. We know that right now he's in a good spot to get himself locked up into the playoffs to try and become a two-time winner here in the Tax Slayer Truck Series. And he's bringing the pole sitter, Melody Baker, to the front with him. Nick Johnson comes into this race currently situated in the ninth position in the point standings. Oreo Pollard is currently seventh. Only driver right now, there's kind of a question mark, and it is still mathematically possible that she could fall outside the top 30 in points as Heather Gallant. She comes into this race currently 17th in points. Got back to 30 from Staines is somewhere around 32 points, so it is still mathematically possible with the number of races remaining here in the regular season that Heather Gallant could fall outside the top 30 in points. So if she can get herself a good run here tonight, get back up towards the top 10, then we could you know, probably start talking about her being officially locked into the playoff position. Matter of fact, I thought I saw the 43 on that inside line working her way up towards the front. She is actually behind some other drivers that are close to being locked into the playoffs as well. The 99 of Sky Commons behind the 92 of the points leader, Nathan Stapleton. So they are starting to make some strides towards the front of the field. Nick Johnson spent a good portion of time on front there, but now Melody Baker is going to get the inside of him. So Johnson with the amount of time he spent out in front there in the laps led, he may end up getting a bonus point for most laps led here if the lead continues to get swapped around here towards the front in the remainder of this race. Baker back to the top position, started pole, would love to go coast to coast. Here comes Ryan Acosta to the bottom. Trying to become the second Thor Sport car to go to victory lane this year. The only one that has gone to victory lane so far this season is Nick Johnson, who's done it twice. Three wide, and here comes the points leader, Nick. Oh boy, I thought that Nathan Stapleton was gonna get blocked there by Isaac Nichols and turn him, but no, nope, Nichols able to hold the spot. Stapleton had to back off a bit. And Nick, I'm seeing back there the four of Tony Green for the inside line, he's trying to catch up here to the 92. Not only trying to uh, battle Stapleton on track, but trying to finish out the season as the overall points leader of the Tax Slayer Truck Series regular season. Only eight point separation between those two. There's only one point going into Daytona. Stapleton increased it a little bit after that race. A good look at the pace car and it threw me completely off as we'll move back up here towards the front. Isaac Nichols out in front showing the way. Mentioned that Nichols was a former competitor last season, I think. Or no, he wasn't actually. I keep thinking that Isaac Nichols was in the playoffs. He actually wasn't. Nichols uh, had a win at, I believe it was Riverside, but he finished 26th in points. He didn't make it into the playoffs. I got a phone call coming in as Cervantes takes the lead. We'll be right back here real quickly. I do have to take this phone call, so don't go anywhere. Just had a lead change. He didn't miss much. Ricky Cervantes took a turn out in front. Now Zach Winkle will do the same in the number 90. And you've seen here in, during the course of these 25 laps just how difficult it's been for these drivers to hold the lead. So like I said, it all comes down to positioning being in the right place at the right time. And also, like I said, these drivers will not, I think, have to worry about fuel. Basically, just go at it and see what you can do. Take a look who's made his way up here towards the front. Fifth on that inside line. You can see the Burger King colors on the 33 of Easton Barber. He and Melody Baker, teammates out of Michael Moore Motorsports, finished 1-2 last week at Daytona. And Easton Barber trying to go for back-to-back -back wins. That would uh, have him along with Oreo Pollard and Heather Gallant and Nick Johnson as a multi-time winner and more than likely put him into the playoffs. What a turnaround that would be from last season when Easton Barber finished dead last in the standings. Brandon Joy to the front, trying to become the second driver from Walls Gardner Motorsports to go to victory lane this season. Alex Hawkins, of course, did it back at uh, Monster Rally. Gonna have to try and hold off Ricky Cervantes here, and I don't think he's gonna be able to do it, and Cervantes gonna get pushed to the front by last week's winner, Easton Barber. Look at the tracks that these drivers have left. They've got here tonight at Hillside, then they've got a dirt track next week at Duquoin, and then they've got the Super Speedway of m and So really when you think about it, three wild card type races, not predictable in any stretch of the imagination. Definitely gonna play a huge factor into what our eight driver playoff field's gonna look like. As Barber out in front now, 
Winkle slots to second, Cervantes in third, here comes two-time winner Heather Gallant, three wide for fourth, she'll take the spot. Trying to pick up her fourth win, uh, or third win, I'm sorry, of the season. Caitlin Sang right there as well in the 37. Here comes another former winner towards the front. Our winner from, uh, where was it? I want to say Rockingham? Yeah, Rockingham, North Carolina, two weeks ago. Matt Haas in the eight. So we got a number of drivers up here that would like to be double dippers and get their second win of the season, or in Heather Gallant's case, third win of the season. We got Easton Barber looking for his second. Heather's looking for her third. Matt's looking for his second. And like I've said, Way back to the start of this season. Multiple wins are what's gonna help get you a spot in the playoffs, and I think the caution may be out. They just hit the line with nine laps to go, and yes, the yellow flag is out late in this one. It's our first caution of the evening. An incident into turn three. Wow. Got some cars stuck down there in the apron, like Wyatt Walker and Andrew Miller. Michael Whitman's car has got black smoke trailing out from underneath it. Points leader Nathan Stapleton's on pit road. Harrison Ponder, there you see the 13 of Walker. There's Miller. Damage it looks like on the front of, on the hood of Ace Garcia. And where's the smoking truck that I saw? Oh, Alexander Rose on pit road along with Joseph Romero. I thought that I saw Michael Whitman's car smoking. But I don't see him on pit lane. There's LaPlante. He's coming to pit road. He's done for the evening. And I'm pretty sure I saw the 53. I'm not seeing him right now. He might actually already be out of the race. But I'm pretty sure I saw him. So the points leader is involved. And a couple of drivers that were in the playoff picture, if you will. 51 of Ace Garcia and the... Uh, was the other one I was just mentioning. There was another driver that had a win this season that was involved. Now I'm not able to pull it in. Anyway, regardless, it brings out our first caution of the evening. It'll set us up with less than 10 to go, and Easton Barber's out in front. Let's take a look and see what happened. Here's what happened. Watch left side of your screen. They were almost four wide. Jake Moss sticks his nose in between Andrew Miller, Tony Green. Sends the 23 up into the 4, so our top 2 in points got involved there. There's the other car I was trying to think of that got involved. Marty Zakal in the 18, along with his teammate Tristan Allen in the 81. And there's the contact from Michael Whitman. It looks like Stapleton's car erupting in smoke, so it looks like the points leader is going to be out of the race in this one. Oh my goodness gracious, what happened up here? 12's going flipping. What the heck happened to these guys? Wow, okay, this was trying to avoid the wreck. Roe is going to avoid, but watch bottom of your screen. I think LaPlante, yep, right in the bottom right of your corner. You've got LaPlante coming up into Hawkins. He clips Andrew Miller. Roe turns dead right to try and avoid, then gets sandwiched between the outside wall and LaPlante. There's, uh... Patrick Curtis in the zero truck getting involved. Ryan Brommer was also in it. Jack Legacy, I think, got a piece. There's where Ace Garcia's involved. Oreo Pollard down on the apron, along with Harrison Ponder and Joseph Romero. I think Tyler Deaver may have avoided. Boy, the 12 truck went for a wild ride. I think at least three of the Srigley Motorsports trucks were involved. There you see Wyatt Walker, Joseph Romero having to wait. The two's stuck on the transition between the apron and the racetrack, along with the 39 of Oreo Pollard. And then Miller comes down in front of uh, LaPlante. LaPlante's trying to continue on, but his truck's erupting in smoke. So is Whitman's. Boy, that was a pretty big multi-truck wreck. And there you see Marty Zakala in the 18, another driver, a former winner this season that was looking for a good run here tonight and doesn't look like he's going to get it. Caution's out for the first time here tonight. We're probably going to restart with about five laps to go, and let's go back for it now. Well, I can't really remember back to when we had a restart here at Hillside. Most of the time we come here, it's green flag all the way, but this caution coming out, and it will give us a five-lap shootout to finish out this race. Drivers that will not make it to this uh, caution, though, include 
Marty Takala, Michael Whitman, Austin LaPlante, Nathan Stapleton, and Alexander Rowe. I believe that Ponder, Walker, Miller, and Romero, who are one lap down, are one lap down because they had to teleport to Pit Road uh, due to... Yeah, there you see them, due to being stuck on the apron. So they're actually continuing on, probably up to speed, but got trapped a lap down as a result. The green flag back in the air. Easton Barber trying to win his second straight race of the season. I was going to say Heather Gallant looking for her third win of the season, but Ricky Cervantes has something to say about that. He's going to go for second. Barber's leaving the door open down low. Will Cervantes take advantage? Not yet. Four laps to go here as Cervantes sizing up Easton Barber. Winkle moves to third. Melody Baker trying to go coast to coast. Pole to win. She's up to fourth. Bringing the Haas brothers with her. Michael in the 28 and Matt in the 8. Here comes Cervantes looking. Not making the move yet and that's going to cost him because now Winkle's going to go to the bottom. Last year we had both the drivers out of Flickinger Racing Development, then Marcus Aachi and eventual champion Nick Johnson go to victory lane. PJ Williams has already won this season. Can Zach Winkle make it two for two for the Flickinger Racing Development cars? Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Two laps to go, and now they're really getting racing for second. Here come the Haas brothers. Michael and Matt to the inside. Move Michael to second. Matt up to third. Now can they do anything against the race leader, Easton Barber? The white flag will be displayed this time, and they're more content to battle for second than they are for the race lead. Easton Barber trying to lock himself up a spot in the playoffs. His win last week at Daytona put him up to 22nd in points, and it looks like he may go two for two, but he's got a slow truck there in it. Patrick Curtis, but he gets around him safely. And he will come to the checkered flag, back-to-back -back wins. Easton Barber wins here tonight, his second straight win of the season. And it comes here at Hillside. Like I said, Hillside always seems to put someone into the playoffs. And now Easton Barber joins Oreo Pollard, Nick Johnson, and Heather Gallant as a multi-time winner this season in the Tax Slayer Truck Series. And the driver who finished out the debut season dead last in the points may be competing for a championship this year. What a difference a year makes. Standings are official. Easton Barber the win. What a great run for the Haas brothers. Matt Haas brings it home in second. Michael Haas will bring it home in third. Kaitlyn Sang, we never talked about the 37 hardly at all today, brings it home in fourth. And completing the top five was Ryan Acosta. Melody Baker will finish in sixth. Paul Minnick in seventh. Nick Johnson, 8th, ninth will be Zach Winkle, and completing the top 10 is Ricky Cervantes. We look on down through the remainder of the finishing results here, and one driver that does not pop out to me is Tony Green in the 4. We already know that Nathan Stapleton finished out of the race, and I thought that Tony Green would try and take advantage to take the points lead. And where did he finish? He finished in 31st. Almost last car on the lead lap. Stapleton finished in 41st. So I think Tony Green is going to take the points lead, but only by maybe one or two points. Didn't really grow a big points lead, points gap between himself and the 92 for next week at DeCoin. 32 trucks finished on the lead lap. Tristan Allen was the last of those. And then we had five trucks finished off the lead lap. Patrick Curtis, Harrison Ponder, Joseph Romero, Wyatt Walker, Andrew Miller. That caution playing a big part into that. And then five cars finished out of the race. Marty Sakala, Michael Whitman, Austin LaPlante, Nathan Stapleton, and Alexander Rowe. That DNF might have been the death knell for Marty Sakala's championship hopes. He was kind of in the running heading into this race. But uh, with that DNF, that may have taken him out of contention. And it's a little early to say, but a 27th for Tyler Deaver, a 29th for Ace Garcia. Both those drivers could be in trouble and may have to pretty much rely on a second win this season to get themselves into the playoffs as well. But right now, four drivers that may have themselves locked up spots in the playoffs. Oreo Pollard, Nick Johnson, Heather Gallant, and now Easton Barber with his second win of the season, second straight win of the year. As a matter of fact, that's kind of uh, shades, I believe. Only one other driver has won back-to-back -back Truck Series races, and that was last year when Eli Bright won the final two races of Season 1. So Easton Barber, Eli Bright, both have a bit of a historical mark here in Tax Layer Truck Series competition. 
But what a great race here from Hillside. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We've shown you full feature results. These are your overall points, Dan, as well as your rookie points. Eight drivers highlighted in yellow. If the season were to end now and the playoffs were to begin, they'd be the ones that would be competing for the championship. There's still two races remaining, the dirt track of DuCoin and the super speedway of m &Ms. But we got to finish out this race weekend here from Hillside. Tomorrow night is the Pizza Next Series drivers as they're going to be getting ready for what will be their penultimate race of the season. Uh, in the uh, for the for the regular season to determine the playoffs and then we got to cap this off with the Hershey's Cup Series race here from Hillside. Always a lot of fun here this weekend. A lot more action to come. You've been watching production the SRA Offline Racing at its best.